Welcome to Horror Movies and Beyond. I'm your host, Avatriz Littles. Today, I'm joined by the writer and director of Dreads Among the Living, Rob Worsey. <laughs> How are you doing? You're How right. are you doing? I'm pretty good. <laughs> well, this is a great start. <laughs> anyway, um, thank you for joining me on this. Um, I really did enjoy Among the Living. Um, it was definitely had some different qualities I have not seen before that I wanted to address, um, yeah. which was that it was a brother and sister. Because in the beginning, I was like, oh, it, it must be the daughter. But then it was like his sister. I was like, oh, I, you know, that kind of dynamic and relationship, especially with an apocalypse. I have no one really touches on that often. It's always mom daughter or you know son or whatnot so what was the inspiration behind this story because it feels personal um i mean i've i've got a I, well, well, well i mean the young girl in it is my sister in my life and the young the young boy oh. in it is my little brother as well oh. and so that there is like a similar age gap in real life and so I, i've kind of grown up with that interaction and yeah, the reason we went for kind of brother and sister is because I think it adds a real interesting take to it that obviously there's a lot of sibling love there, but he's not, or he shouldn't be really directly responsible for her. You know, he's mm -hmm. not the parent and it's not his duty to look after her. But then he's thrown into this situation where it is and he's, as, I mean, as you saw, he struggles to, he, he's not a typical action hero in it and he's totally struggling with the situation, struggling to look after her. And, I think that just adds a lot of drama and a lot of tension for, for the characters in it and found it interesting to explore. Well, it was very interesting to explore because as I was watching it, um, you feel it, it felt like a different perspective of when there's some, some kind of apocalypse or virus spreading around like that. They're, the way they were interacting with each other, you don't see that often in horror movies. So I, I think that was a great idea there. Nice. I'm glad it comes through, yeah. I mean, yeah, we were just going for something different, so I'm glad it comes through, yeah. Great. Um, I would also want to talk about the the creatures or zombie-like, um, vampire-like. I mean, they had all these qualities, and it definitely reminded me of, like, 30 Days of Night meets 28 Days Later. It did yeah. have that feel. Um, where did you get that idea from to kind of mix that they're afraid of light, but they could smell a drop of blood, but then the black dies. Like that was so, I, I really liked that. I really enjoyed that. Yeah, it was It was kind of a mix of a, chatting to a few other filmmakers as we're coming up to the, the scripting process, chatting to Kaylee, who's our makeup and, and production design. And it was kind of a mix of trying to, we didn't want to be a typical zombie film, but we didn't want to, to do kind of a, a vampire and night type thing. And it was, it was coming up with a, a kind of a creature that, fit the narrative well and could have some scares and, and, and things like that but you know simple to do in a makeup chair as well which is a benefit but then adding in the kind of blood and the light time and the using the light and stuff it just fit in the story well and it kind of emerged from there so it kind of you know evolved from a typical zombie creature to kind of a mix between a zombie and a vampire or something like that anyway also i wanted to address um before when i said it feels so personal and you explained that i feel like there's some emotional attachment to that because as i was watching it it wasn't it wasn't like terrifying but it was terrifying enough because you have to deal with the humans as well and they're out to save each other but as soon as you get a scratch i mean there's just like they turn their back on you um, like I said, it felt more like real life. When you were writing this script, what was the most connected part in each of these scenes? Or what do you feel like really, like this had to be in the film? That's a hard question. That is a hard question. Oh, I'm sorry. Of... <laughs> no, it's good, it's good. <laughs> I think a, a lot of it was the, the dynamic between the, the brother and sister and trying to kind of throw the typical action characters on a side and so have the older brother as the one who is struggling. But it was kind of a a bit of a coming of age story for the young girl in it in that he's he's not giving her any time or any movement to kind of show that she's capable or kind of stand up and look after them or look after herself. 
and he's kind of controlling and making poor choices along the way and it gives her a chance to in the end you know when they kind of split up for a little bit she managed to stand up and look after herself and you know in in a lot of ways handle the situation better and it was I mean it's it, it's hard to say what were, what was personal about about the film for me but it was kind of that that thing of you know just because she's young it's no one's given her a chance to kind of prove herself and so we wanted to throw that on the side a little bit and and and, and trying to try and try and address that basically oh, okay um the the feel of the film and the the landscape was just beautiful it was almost like serene even though i mean there was some chaotic stuff you know as soon as you get a scratch they're like Rrr. i mean they're making <laughs> these noises and they come out of the blue because you don't see them they're almost invisible i really think that's pretty clever um and then they just pop out but the scenery like how how was shooting that i mean it was almost a beautiful out outlook of things in a terrifying situation it's yeah i mean we we had the locations and they are stunning and so it it felt you know it felt right to sh kind of show how beautiful they were and in a situation like that where nature probably would thrive you know it just improve and improve you know not that it's an environmental piece or anything but <laughs> you know it just felt right to show how beautiful the landscape was and it was kind of a a bit of a love letter to the english countryside where me and the producer grew up and like the lake district where we go on holiday and it just adds such a great contrast to the beautiful landscape and the environments and the lakes and stuff and then all the the character and the drama and the, and the horror that's going on around it in the smaller sections. Um, the the older man and the son, I feel like they represent something whereas you think it's safe, but then it's so much deception. Was that intentional? Because that's, that's exactly what I felt when I met them. Yeah, I, it was really trying to give Harry's um, dilemma of deciding whether to trust them or not, because there's a lot of positive signs that they are safe and you know it seems like a great place to be and and then a lot of kind of darker signs and hints of lies and things like that but it was that idea of Harry struggling and he's not doing well and he doesn't want to be looking after his little sister necessarily and he finds the chance of someone who is doing well and he's coping well and looking after a young lad already and it's kind of that safe haven and it it kind of throws up the question of does he make the easy decision to stay there with them or does he make a harder but potentially the correct decision you know if he doesn't trust them and so it was it was a bit about him of does he trust them or does he not and will he take the easy route and just kind of stay there and let him look after them wow there, like i said there's so much so much deepness in this film that i i just thought it was going to be like this zombie film but then when i watched it i'm sitting here like this is different and I really like this. And well, the way that you, it was presented to you, it definitely felt like it was going to be just a typical zombie creature, what, vamp, whatever. <laughs> but it was really heartfelt. You kind of felt sad, especially when you saw the story about what happened and how they got to where they are. That, it, that was like a complete turn. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, that's spot on. That's good. That's what we were going for, you know. My kind of, my favorite genre, if you would like, is drama. I just, I, I love drama, but so creating horror films, I had to have that drama in there. And so it kind of started with that and then we developed the horror from there. And so, yeah, we wanted those dramatic scenes, the, the relationships between the characters. And then, like you say, the flashback, um, when you, you kind of understand a little bit more about why he's struggling so much. Yeah, I mean, they're all my favorite parts of it, the, the drama side and the character side. and and everything yeah so it's glad it's glad you kind of you know you did you like that it's good a lot of people will enjoy this even more and it really heartfelt it really gets you especially with the 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 brother and sister like we need more films like that because it's always the same kind of relationship you know but this one was it gave you you were going on a journey and you didn't understand until like it really played out until you heard that she was the sister and then you saw the flashbacks and then you saw the scene it was just like 
man, it doesn't have to be all blood and guts to get to the point. <laughs> we got, we saw this relationship and it was great. So I wish the best of luck on this film and I'm definitely going to tell people to watch this. <laughs> Perfect. Cheers. I'm so glad you, I mean, that's what we're going for hundred percent. So I'm, I'm so glad it comes through for you. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>